you are a stranger to your Bible, then your discipleship is in doubt. If you claim you are a disciple and the illustration I gave of coming back from church on Sunday and then you don't, you don't touch your Bible again and the next time you search for your Bible is when you are going to church the next Sunday then your dis commitment to discipleship is in doubt. Your being a disciple indeed is in doubt. Disciples indeed are those who obey these continuing principles. Amen. Who commit to the word of God, to the study of the word of God, and to the practicing, the doing of the word of God. Of course, if you read Matthew chapter 4 and other um, synoptic gospels, at the temptation of Jesus, the Bible says he was led by the, by the Holy Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And the devil asked him because he knew he was hungry. And for anybody hungry, he needs bread, he needs food to eat. That is what he'd be craving for. So Satan, knowing that, wanted to distract him. Wanted to make him to prioritize other things. Food, material things. And so he drew Jesus' attention. He said, I know you are hungry. Look at stone. Turn this stone to bread. Praise the Lord. Turn what? This stone to bread. What was Jesus' response? Jesus said to him, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the master. So by that statement, Jesus makes it very, very clear that disciples... True disciples live by the word. Amen. They prioritize the word. They live by the word. They don't just read the word. They don't just carry the Bible. They live by the word. And the implication is that the word determines the decision they make. The word of God determines the choices they make. The word of God determines how they dress. The word of God determines how they marry. The word of God determines how they relate. The word of God determines how they spend. The word of God determines how they carry themselves. The word of God determines how they talk. The word of God determines how they do their business from day to day. The word of God determines how they live their life. And so Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. He didn't say they should eat bread. Amen. He said, but by every word by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the master. That means Jesus wants us to live by the word. Can you make a, a, a commitment today that from today, 7th of April, you will live by the word. Can you make that commitment? Can you receive grace today that from today, you will live by the word of God? That means, before you make any decision, you have to consider what does the word of God say about concerning this issue. Whether decision to marry or decision to, to relate or decision to do anything in life. You, you, your, your first priority, the first thing you consider is what does the word of God say concerning this I want to do? Is it in line with the word of God? Because God's word is God's will. So living by the will of God is living by the word of God. So Jesus said to the people who believe in the Jews 
By implication, equal, now equal the Gentiles who believe in him. If you continue in my word, that means we don't have to go on break. That means it is not a matter of when you want or when it is comfortable to you. It should be your lifestyle attitude. If you continue in my word, if you continue in the study of my word, if you continue to pattern your life according to my word, read it, meditate on it, study it, fill your mind, fill your heart with it, put it to practice by obeying it. Then that word we transform your life. Amen. That word we bless your life. Apostle James said, everyone that hears the word and puts it to practice, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. Is it not like one watching his face in the mirror? And then forgets and go. That is somebody who is not continuing in the word. But he say, who so looked into the perfect law of liberty? It is called the perfect law. Can you say the perfect law of liberty? Amen. So it is law, the word of God that liberates people. It liberates people from sin, liberates people from sickness, liberates people from bondage, liberates people from poverty, liberates people from curses. Liberate people from affliction. And his power to liberate is perfect. It's called the perfect law of liberty. So whosoever looked into the perfect law of liberty. James chapter 1 verse 25. But whoso looked. Can you say looked? He didn't just say looks. Look. He didn't just say look. He said looked. Which shows a sign of continuity. Can you say continuity? You look and you keep looking and you keep looking. Don't say we looked into it last Sunday. We looked into it on Tuesday. I looked into it on Monday during my devotion. No. Whosoever looketh or whosoever looks. Praise the Lord. You look, you look and you continue looking. That means you don't remove your attention from it. You don't remove your mind from it. You don't remove your heart from it. You focus on it every day. You think about it. Whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty. I want you to understand that. It is called the perfect law of liberty. If there is any area of your life that you need God to liberate you, then look into the perfect law of liberty. You can say, I need to be liberated. I need to be free from this. And you avoid the word that frees you. The word of God brings liberation and it does it perfectly. And so the Bible says, whosoever looks into and the liberation does not come by just peeping and remove your eye and go your own way. And you think it's going to accomplish the purpose. No. He says, whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continue it. Amen. Are you hearing me? You look and continue looking and continue looking. And the looking is not just with your eyes, but with your heart. Amen your mind you stay on it you stay on it on the word of God amen you, you give time you put your you invest your time so when we are talking about word investment it will demand your time it's not a part time thing it will demand your whole time it will demand your attention it will demand that you stay focused it will demand your energy. It will demand your resources. You can't say you are investing in the word of God and all you do is say, how many hours, how many minutes do you invest in the word of God on a daily basis? If you invest only 10 minutes in the word of God, can you truly say you are living by the word? I want an answer. 
If you invest only 15 minutes on every day on the word of God, and every other time you invest on other things, can you truly say that you are living by the word of God? So to live by the word of God means that much of your time should be invested in the word of God. All your time should be invested in the word of God. I'm not saying you should not go to work. I'm not saying you should not do your work in the office. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Certainly you must not be studying and reading every time. But you must be living by the word of God every time. Whether you are in the office or you are in the marketplaces or you are on the street or you are in your house or you are in the church. Investing in the word of God is not a church thing. It's not a Sunday, Sunday thing. It is our every day, our whole life, entire life, everything about us. What do you do with your spare time in the office? What do you do with your spare time at home? Some of us can spend hours chatting, hours watching film, watching home videos and all that. Hours doing nothing. But when it comes to investing in the one that is perfect love, liberty, we just play trancy. Just look into it and just flick through it and then go our way. And some even that even there to read the Bible and study the word of God. Only go there maybe to build doctrine. Amen. Or go there to claim promises. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Can you say every word? And everywhere does not mean you select the one you like. He said by every word. Go back to that James. James 1.25 Whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue daring. I want you to, I want to stress that. And, and what? And continue daring. That giving your time to it. Giving full attention to it. All your heart, your soul, your, your mind, your, your spirit, your heart, everything. And continue daring. He, not being a forgetful hearer, but then a doer. I've come to understand that the problem of doing is a problem of continuing and hearing. Amen. If, you're, if you spend time hearing, staying in the word, doing will not be a problem. The struggle to do is a result of the absence of staying in the word. There is enough power, enough force in the word to activate obedience, to activate the practice of the word of God. But you, that, that's what we call word energy. Can you say word energy? There's force in the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful. And is sharper than any two-edged sword. There's the transforming power in the word of God. There's the faith that grows from the word of God. Romans 10, 17 said, So then faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. I don't know, you. I want you to think about it. That as we are hearing the word of God, faith comes. Are you hearing me? Faith comes. So if faith comes by hearing the word of God and the faith that helps you to do the word of God, if faith that helps you to, put it, to obey and put the word of God into practice, and so if faith comes by hearing, it means that if you stay in the word long, long enough and hear God and keep staying in the Lord, then you will generate enough faith. And that is spiritual energy. So obedience will not be a struggle. Practicing the word of God will not be a struggle. Because by staying in the word, you have a generated enough faith energy. Amen. Enough power to obey. One, when you study the word of God, you are inspired. When you study the word of God and stay in the word of God, passion grows. Love for God grows. Faith grows. Hope comes alive. Joy and excitement come from the, studying the word of God. And so if you can stay more, long enough in the word of God, then practicing the word of God, obedient to the word of God, 
we almost be automatic. Praise the Lord. So if you continue enough, stay there enough, then struggling to obey, struggling to put into practice will no more be an issue. But I've come to understand that the reason why most of us struggle with obedience, struggle with putting the word of God into practice is because of our truancy. We don't stay long enough for the faith to come. We don't stay long enough for the word of God to build passion in us. We don't stay long enough for all to be inspired to do. We don't stay long enough to tap into the word energy. Amen. We don't stay long enough for the spirit that gives life to quicken the word in our life. And so if you are not quickened, your heart is not quickened to obey, your mind is not renewed, then obedience become a, will become a struggle. But if you stay long enough in the word of God and then you are quickened, it takes that quickening to act. It takes that quickening to obey. It takes that quickening to practice. And you are not quickened by just flinging through the Bible. You are only quickened when you continue in the Word. When you spend time staying in the Word of God. So then faith cometh. Amen. Faith comes. It keeps coming and keeps coming. So if it comes, it means you have to stay long enough to embrace much. Because we grow in faith. So your faith level is dependent on your word level. So if you, have, if you have a faith problem, it's actually me you have word problem. Praise the Lord. You don't just stay and begin to prime your faith. The way to prime your faith is to stay in the word. Because when you, have, you stay in the word, you are full of God. You are full of God's will. You are full of God's mind. You are full of God's presence. You are full of God's power. And then, it's like literally, literally, the God is, you are being full of God. As you are being full of faith. You are being full of passion. You are, your life is being inspired. Your mind is being renewed, like Romans chapter 12, verse 2 tells us. Renew your mind with the word of God. Your mind is being renewed. I mean, no sin, doubt is erased. Unbelief is erased. Fear is erased. Loss is erased. Anxiety is erased. Amen. Cares, worries are erased. And then they are replaced with peace of God that passes understanding. They are replaced with joy. They are replaced with faith. They are replaced with the mind of God. And you can truly say, I have the mind of Christ. And if you put on the mind of Christ by renewing your, word, your, your mind in the word of God, then you can make choices like Christ. You can live like Christ. The power to live like Christ becomes possible when you put on the mind of Christ. The power to live like Christ becomes possible when your mind is renewed. And it's no more aligning with the flesh and his desires. But it's not aligning with the spirit and the desires of the spirit. So it is when you stay in the word of God, on the word of God, your mind is aligned with, the, with, the, with your recreated human spirit. Your mind is aligned with the mind of God and the will of God. And it takes that alignment of the mind, alignment of your soul, with the will of God and the word of God and the plan and purpose of God to live for God to live and walk in obedience to be a doer of the word of God if you are thinking like God your mind is the mind of Christ then how will you be struggling to obey him but when your mind is aligned to the flesh and his desire and the Bible says the flesh and desire and, and the flesh and the spirit their desires are opposed to each other and so if you stay on bread alone you are feeding the flesh and so the, your soul 
is aligning with the flesh. But if you stay on the word of God long enough, you are aligning with the spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. And two of them are constantly at war. So if you are constantly aligning with the spirit, you will give the flesh technical knockout. Amen. And you see that obeying God, practicing the word of God, living by the word of God, becomes a daily routine. Becomes a thing of delight. Amen. You discover that the commandments of God are not grievous. They are not punishment. You begin to take pleasure in obeying God. You begin to take pleasure in serving God. You begin to take pleasure in practicing the word of God. Because you have stayed, you are staying long enough in the word of God and you are becoming like him. You are staying long enough in the word of God and your desires are unto him. You begin to desire God. Your life is inspired. You are motivated. Amen. You are quickened by that word. By the Holy Spirit that breathes upon the word. It quickens you to obey. It quickens you to live for God. It quickens you to love God. And then you see yourself growing in passion. Weakness or passion is a word problem. Absence of zeal is a word problem. Weakness in commitment is a word problem. So when your study life is weak, your Christian life will be weak. If you don't stay long enough, if you don't take the word of God serious, and you don't stay long enough for, the, for, for God to breathe in you. You don't stay long enough for faith to grow. You don't stay long enough for the word to quicken you and inspire you. Then your Christian life will be a life of continuous struggle. But Jesus said, that's why he said to the Jews that believe in him. If you continue, hallelujah. If you continue in my word. Then are ye my disciples. Following me will be your daily routine. Following me will be a thing of joy. Following me will be your delight every day. It will be what you will love doing. Nobody will compare you to do that. That will be your desire. That will be your drive. And that, that word, as that word is growing, that word will drive obedience. It will drive service. It will drive your Christian life. It will drive everything you do. Let's see Deuteronomy chapter 6, 6 to 9. So we can have a picture of what it means to stay in the word. Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 9. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto their children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in, this, in thy house. You know, there are many things to talk when you are sitting in your house. But saying, talk of the word, teach the word when you sit in your house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. Can you say word investment? So you say invest your time at home, on the street, on, on, on the bed, when you wake up, when you are in the office, invest on the word. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. Just as you put on your wristwatch uh, and uh, armless and all the bangles. And they shall be as frontless between thy eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Can you say word investment? I'm not suggesting that, but there's, against all, there's no law. I'm not suggesting that in your car now, every side Jesus saves. Only Jesus can save. Uh, Jesus is the way. Repent or perish and all that. And uh, when people see your car, car, they will know it by what you write. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
I'm not suggesting that I start looking for stickers. Sit and get lost. Jesus is my way. And your window and doors and everywhere. Again, so there's no law. But that's not what he's saying. He tried, he's saying this in practical terms. Saying, put it by your doorpost. Put it on the window, on the litter. Put it on your car. Put it in this. He's just trying to emphasize on it that you must stay, you will prioritize the word. You must invest on the word. Amen. Invest in it. It must be your drive. It must, you must prioritize it. You must take it so serious. And so he went to that extent to tell you how important the word of God must be for you. You can put write it everywhere in your car and your house, but it's not written in your heart. Are you hearing me? Praise the name of the Lord. You can put sticker in your Bible, put it in your in your wallet, put it everywhere, but it's not there. So we putting this is not telling you to to start doing that. What he's saying that you should see it as that serious, as that important in your life. You should invest your time. That's why I say when you go out. When you sit down, when you stand up, when you're on your bed, when you're in your house, when you're on the street, when you're in the marketplace, when you're in the office, wherever you find yourself, it is the word and the word and the word and the word and nothing but the word. Because that is our life. If you are going to live by it, then it must be that important to you. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word. Because it is the key to, the, to victory. Amen. Victory over sin. Victory over temptation. Victory over trial. The word of God is the key. That's why Jesus used it. It is written. Satan came again. It is written. Satan came again. It is written. He had a well to draw from. Colossians 3.16 Say, let the word of God dwell richly, not poorly. Your Christian life will be poor if the word of God is dwelling poorly in you. You will not have enough energy, enough spiritual stamina to face life. Life is a battle. To advance your life and walk in victory, you need to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. To be able to lay hold on eternal life, you need to fight. And our fight is not empty fight, it's the word of God. So when temptation comes, you need to draw. It is sword, it's our weapon. It is sword of the spirit. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Satan came again, it's Jesus said, man shall not live, it is written. He came again, it is written. Why was Jesus able to draw sword every time Satan came to him? Because he lived by the word. He fought by the word. He prayed by the word. He did everything by the word. Can somebody say by the word? Can you say by the word? Can you say by the word? Forever, O oh God, your word is settled in heaven. See, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. No wonder when Joshua was to take over leadership from Moses. In Joshua 1.8, God, through Moses, I instructed him. He said, if you are going to succeed, you must invest in the word. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. So, speak it, but not only speaking it, think it. Thou shall meditate. Can you say meditate? Invest in it. Invest in it. Study it. Read it. Meditate on it. Think on it. Let it take over you. Let it take over your mind. Let it wash your mind. That he might sanctify them by the washing, washing of water by his word. Amen. By the washing of water by his word. That's what Ephesians tells us. The washing of water. 
Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Leave this one. Don't but put down Ephesians 5 26. He said that he might sanctify them by the washing of water by his word. So the word of God washes our mind. Amen. Just like you soak your clothes in detergent, with detergent, soak your mind with the word of God. Soak your soul with the word of God. Soak your heart with the word of God. It will wash away unbelief, wash away doubt, wash away fear, wash away anxiety, wash away cares. And then it will purify your heart so that you will think like God and act like God. It will transform your life. That he might sanctify them. That he might sanctify them. And cleanse them with the washing of water by his word. Hallelujah. So when you are studying the word, it's not just only to get information. It's equally for transformation. Don't think nothing is happening. I'm just reading. I've read three chapters. I read this over and over. Nothing is happening. No, something is happening. Are you hearing me? Something is happening. As you are, I don't study just to preach, to get message. I study to feed myself. Are you hearing me? I eat it and eat it and feed it and feed it and feed it. I don't study to get doctrine, to get argument, to prove a point. No, I study to feed myself. The word of God is the food of the spirit. The flesh feed on beans and rice. And Gary. But that is not the food of your spirit. Your spirit does not eat Gary. It doesn't eat apple. It doesn't eat rice. It doesn't eat beans. The food of your spirit is the word of God. And so if you want to grow robust in the spirit, you must invest in the word. You must live by it. You must stay on it. You must spend time in the word of God. Go back to that James chapter 1 verse 25. But whosoever, I pray you be among those whosoever. Amen. Amen. But whosoever looketh, that means looks and does not remove his eye, does not remove his attention, does not remove focus, he still keep focusing on it. And you are looking, Satan wants you to look outside, look at other things. No, refuse to look at other things. Look at the word. Whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continue daring, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, of the work. This man shall be blessed indeed. Hallelujah. This man's award shall be blessed indeed. Who is that man here? Who is that man that we look into that we stay in the word? Who is that man that we stay in the word? Who is that man that will make up his mind that from today I will stay in the word? I will stay in the word. The Bible says this man shall be blessed. How we want to be blessed here? The blessing is in the word, and the blessing is in staying in the word. This man shall be blessed, not be blessed, he shall be blessed indeed. No wonder in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 6, verse 4, the apostles at the time came to that realization. And they said, we are not going to be distracted by so many things. We give ourselves. There are two things you must give yourself to as a believer. If you want to make meaning in your Christian life, if you want to enjoy victory, if you want to live a fulfilled life as a Christian, there are two things you must not joke with. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. Two things, two power, two forces that drive the Christian life. Two forces that determine victory in Christianity. Two forces that determine how far you will go with God. Two forces that will determine what your Christian life will amount to. One is the force of prayer. Another one is what we call the ministry of the word. Can I say the ministry of prayer? 
Can I say the ministry of the word? You must not joke with them. That's why we have Bible study and we have prayer meeting. But beyond Bible study and prayer meeting, your personal word, that's what we call personal altar. Your, your personal altar is a place of study and place of prayer. It's the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word. That's what personal altar is all about. And if your altar is weak, your Christian life will be weak. It will be a tale of woe and, and defeat and failure and struggle. Your Christian life is as strong as your personal altar. And your personal altar is as strong as your investment in prayer and investment in the word. The apostles were very weak. They couldn't pray. Jesus said, watch and pray for one hour. They could not pray. They were not investing in prayer. Neither were they investing in the word. They were just following Jesus. And they were not good followers. Because when Jesus needed them most, they disappointed. They fought, they fought his hand. They disappointed him. Jesus said to Peter, watch and pray. That you not enter temptation. He told the apostles, he even called Peter specifically. Satan has plans for you. He wants to manipulate your life. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your faith and destiny. He has a plan. A dangerous plan. He wants to take away the substance from your life and leave you with a chaffy life. But I prayed for you. Job was saying that so that Peter will take prayer seriously. He even took them to Gethsemane to pray. And they went there and stayed sleeping. When temptation came, Peter denied Christ. Peter could not stand for Jesus. Faith was not, faith was weak. Loyalty and commitment was weak. And so he cursed and denied Christ. That he never knew Christ. He was not a follower. Why? These two things were lacking in his life. Praise the Lord. The rest of the apostles did the same thing. They denied him. And they started hiding because there was no courage, no boldness, no power, no faith, no zeal, no passion. Their Christian life was weak because their altar, personal altar was weak. So at the time, they woke up. Amen. And my prayer for everyone here that is not taking these two forces serious is that you wake up today in Jesus' name. This month is a wake-up call to invest on the word. To invest in the word of God. So in the Acts of Apostles chapter 6 verse 4, they, they came to that realization and they said to them, we cannot continue this way. And they took a decision, quality decision. Just like we have taken decision to invest in the word of God this month. They took quality decision. And what was that decision? We will give ourselves. Can you say investment? Can you say investment? That means our time, our energy, our money, our everything, our mind, our soul, our heart. We will give ourselves. Not once in a while. Not just for one day. Not just when we are free. Not just at leisure time. No. Not just when it's convenient for us. We will give ourselves continually. To prayer and to the ministry of the word. Can you say the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word? Jesus prioritized two of them in his life. You will hear that great wife before they, even when the cry, he will dismiss the people and sneak out and he will go somewhere and pray and visit, and he was there all night. And he will take the apostles and take them to the mountain and we begin to teach them. And you hear him saying, Man shall not live by bread alone. For every the three temptations Satan quoted, he quoted three, he quoted from Old Testament scriptures. Satan came the other way, Jesus quoted scripture. He came another way, Jesus quoted scripture. He wanted him to resort to carnal things and feed the flesh. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. He wanted him to resort to pride. To jump from the pinnacle and show up. Jesus picked the scripture again. He drew sword from the word of God and he fought with it. 
Satan took him again and showed him the riches of the world. He wanted to resort to material things and all that. Jesus looked at him and he drew sword again. Whatever angle Satan came from, Jesus had enough because he invested in prayer and invested in the word. And the apostle said, we will give ourselves. Hallelujah. We will give ourselves continually. Can you say, I will give myself continually to the ministry of the word. That's what we mean by investment. Word investment. Giving yourself. You know what it means to give yourself to something? Let me explain. Amen. When you see a man who has given himself to a woman, what do you call him? Womanizer. Uh-huh. Womanizer. You cannot just see a man because he stands with a woman, he says he's a womanizer. No. He's a man that has given himself. Every time you see him, he's with one woman or the other, with a woman. Every time, woman. Every time, woman. He said, you don't have anything to do with your life again. Or if not, only woman. So, you are a womanizer. So, why? He has given himself to what? To woman. When you see a man who gives himself to alcohol, what do you call him? A drunkard. Eh? A drunkard. Why? Is it because he sip wine? He sip alcohol? No, he stayed in alcohol. And when you stayed on alcohol, drinking and drinking and drinking, and you drink to stupor, you come under the control of that alcohol. Because you have stayed long enough, it, it, drinking and drinking and drinking for it to control you. You can't take a sip, a sip, a, just a sip of alcohol and be under the influence of alcohol. Some of you are not drunkards. How many of you have gotten drunk once in your life? Okay. <laughs> Evil woman. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember one day I went to a farm with my other brother. He, uh, my father used to tap uh, this in the, the uh, pangwai and all that. He drank and drank and drank and drank. He started staggering and said, vomiting and said, staggering. Almost fell into a vehicle on the road. I had to hold him and bring him. He was no more in control. Something was controlling him. Why? He drank to stupor. Amen. I drank. I took small and I still continued. I was in charge because I did not stay enough. I did not drink enough for it to control me. Are you hearing me? Some of you are still in charge. The word of God is not controlled. The spirit of God is not controlled because you have not stayed enough in the word of God. You have not given yourself to the word of God. You gave yourself to the flesh. Maybe if you give yourself to the flesh, the flesh will control you. Give yourself to material things and worldly things will control you. Give yourself to money, it will control you. But if you give yourself to the word of God, it will rule your life and control you. We will give ourselves, hallelujah, continually. If somebody that gives himself to drug, what do you call him? A drug addict. I don't know if you have watched a drug addict. If they stay for some time, when you come to that time, they have not, they have not taken that drug. They, be, they begin to behave as if they are insane. They lose their senses. And if they will be running and looking for that drug, and if they, until they take that drug, they will not come back to their senses. How many of us have seen them? And today, now, they are assuming drug addicts. Young men are are giving themselves to drug. I pray that God will, will intercept, inter, in, in, intervene in their lives in Jesus' name. That they will encounter God. The youth of young men are giving themselves to, to, to drug. And so they are under the control of drugs. That's why you see all the criminality. See somebody kill some a human being like you just finish them and, and mess them up like that. It is a human being. It's a human being but he has given himself to something that is controlling him. My prayer is that a drunk I give themselves to alcohol and they get drunk and come under the control of alcohol. A drug addict give themselves to drug and they are no more in charge and they come under the control of, 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 of drug. You will give yourself to the world and you'll be under the control of the word of God. You will talk like God. You will choose like God. You will act like God. You will live like God. You will live by every word that proceeds. You will no more struggle to obey. Obedience become your daily life. We will give ourselves continually. But we give ourselves. Look at it. As for, as is for, is projected there. 
but we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word of God. I recommend this to you. If you want to, a, a Christian life that counts, if you want to have, to have a fulfilled Christian life, if you want to enjoy victory, if you want to make meaning and make sense in your Christian life, give yourself to these two forces. The ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word. Don't joke with any of them. Don't joke. If not, Satan will mess you up. But give yourself. And look what is the result. When the apostles gave themselves to prayer and the ministry of the word, everything changed about them. They became world changers. The same apostle that we are hiding. The same apostle that could not speak boldly. The same apostle that would deny Christ. The same apostle that swore and told lies they never knew him. The same apostle stood and became world changers. Hallelujah. And the next we heard them, these men that troubled the town, that turned the city upside down, have come again. When they said that, don't did we warn you not to pick in that name, but you have filled Jerusalem and everywhere with this word. Don't speak in this name again. They said, even you think of it, to so who shall we obey? Hallelujah. We ought to obey God rather than me. So obedience became very easy. Even in the midst of threat. We ought to obey God rather than men. Why couldn't they obey? Why couldn't Peter say it like that when the small girl stood I do not cry? Why couldn't he say it like that when they deny cry? Because they had not invested in the word and prayer. So obedience was a struggle. But now they have obeyed, they have invested in the word and prayer. Even in the midst of threat, their response was different. We ought to obey God rather than men. Hallelujah. So the problem of obedience is a problem of word investment. It's weakness of the word and weakness of prayer. There's enough power ingrained in the word. There's enough power programmed in the word that we generate obedience. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that cannot be put to shame. Rightly dividing the word of the truth. Amen. Make up your mind today. You are going to invest in the word of God. For the next few minutes, I don't read this scriptures and we pray. First Peter 1, 2 Peter 1:19. He said, it, it, that's how it happens. It, it's like, as you are, one, you study it, you meditate on it, you stay long enough, and then you speak it. He said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, which is the word of God. Where don't you do well? Can you say, I will do well? Can you say, I will do well? I will ensure, I will endeavor. Wherefore, you endeavor, you ensure that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. As you begin to speak it, if everywhere may look dark and hopeless, situation may look like there's no way. Just keep saying it. Keep confessing it. Keep confessing it. Before you know it, darkness will give way. I see your day done. I see your darkness turn to day in the name of Jesus until the day dawns. Because the word of God is quick. Psalm 119 verse 130. Psalm 119 verse 130. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the foolish, unto the simple. So as the word of God, we are staying in it, it will, it will, light will shine in your soul. Light will shine, shine in your heart. And when light shine, making choices become easy. Making decisions become easy because you are, you, are, you are choosing in light. Amen. You are acting in light. But if your heart is clouded with darkness, then obedience becomes very difficult. Making choices and decisions becomes struggle. You don't know what to do, what to say. Because your heart is enshrouded with darkness. 
But as we study the word of God and stay in it and invest in it, he said, as he enters, he gives understanding. And the light shines. Hallelujah. The light shines. And understanding comes. So, few things. One, what are the benefits? I've talked about what to invest. Invest your time, invest your energy, your will, your heart, your soul, everything, your resources. What are the results of investing in the world? One, renewal of the mind. Don't put them down and we pray. Renewal of the mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. As you invest in the word of God, it renews your mind. It will, what we mean by renewing the mind? It will wash away anxiety, wash away care, wash away fear, wash away loss, wash away envy, wash away malice, wash away things that are capable of choking you up. And then, it will align your will to the will of God. Two, victory over sin. Victory over sin. The, the word of God gives you victory over sin. As you invest in the word of God, you see victory becomes very easy. You no more struggle to obey. You no more struggle with sin. When temptation comes, you'll be able to say it is written. You have to stand your ground and draw from it like Jesus did. He was tempted at all points, yet without sin, because he invested in the word of God. He had capacity to obey, capacity to live right, capacity to walk in righteousness, because our capacity is built by prayer and word investment. Number three, joy unspeakable. When you invest in the word of God, it generates joy in your heart. Joy. Joy. Let the word of God wear it clean you in all wisdom, speaking to yourself in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Why? Because of the word investment. If the word is not there, cares, worries, anxiety, all those things will choke up your joy. Fear, doubt. But if the word of God grows in your heart and you invest it, it will joy and all that will generate. It will give back to joy. Then peace that pass understanding. Then Romans 10, 10, 17, faith. Faith is one of the products of word investment. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So do you need big faith? Big investment in the word of God. Big time spent with the word of God. Meditating on it. Five, hope comes alive. Hope comes. You know, I don't know if you observe it. Anytime you pay serious attention studying the word of God, consistently and systematically, intentionally. Without break, you are studying it every day on a consistent basis. Maybe you pick a book. Maybe it's not the God's word, the Paul and Epistle. And say, I'm going to study every day, at least one hour spent on the word of God every day. You discover that that, that period, that period, you see the love for God and passion for God. You see your zeal and passion grow. Amen. You see your hope come alive. You see faith grow. You see your passion and zeal. So that's one another benefit. Passion and zeal. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Then you see stability and growth. Then you are inspired. You are inspired. You are inspired. And you see testimonies in your life. Say, this man shall be blessed indeed. You be like what like tree planted by the water side, by the river side. You look so fresh in the spirit, so robust in the spirit. But if you don't study the word of God, you be lean, like somebody suffering from kwashoko. Spiritual leanness. And so when temptation comes, you don't have energy to fight. But there's what we call the word energy. Can you say the word energy? Can you say the word energy? That is what we live by. When you grow it, you'll be robust in the spirit. Hallelujah. And that's why 2 Corinthians, I round up with that. 2 Corinthians chapter. Okay, there are two more scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3, 16. Let's see that first. 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 
and it profitable for doctrine, that is teaching, for reproof, like warning, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So it will instruct you, instruct you in righteousness. It will reprove you. It will correct you. It will give you instruction on how to walk in righteousness. Then 17, that the man of God may be perfect, that it may be matured, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. You want to do good works? You want to be thoroughly prepared and equipped for good works in the word of God that does that. Finally, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Seventeen and eighteen. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what liberty. Verse eighteen. But we all, with unveiled face, with open face, beholding as in a glass, beholding as in a glass, a change. So the Word of God brings transformation. Can you say transformation? He changes us in and out. He changes us and changes our circumstances and our situations. As we behold, can you say, can we stand on our feet? Say, but we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in a glass. That beholding doesn't look like once for all thing. It's a continuous thing, staying in it. Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. That the glory of the Lord is, is, is embedded in the word of God and his presence. And as we keep beholding and beholding and beholding, we become like what we behold. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit. The word of God brews over that word we meditate on. And as we behold and keep beholding and keep looking and keep looking, we keep we become to we begin to look like what we are looking at. That thing we focus on, we become. As we focus on the word of God, we become the word of God. Because as we focus on the word of God, the picture we see is Christ. And as we keep focusing and focusing and focusing. You don't need to do have to it the change takes place automatically. That's why I said obedience problem is investment problem. If you stay long beholding, you become we all. You don't have to go and do any other thing to, to, to practice. No. You don't have to do anything. Oh, I don't that know why I can't obey the word or why I can't put it in practice. You know the reason is that you don't stay long enough. If you stay long enough, there is energy in the world. There is a force in the world to obey and to become. Continue thereby. Being a doer because you continue thereby. As we steadfastly behold and we stay there beholding, we are transformed. We are changed. We metamorphose. Amen. And we become that thing we are beholding. From glory to glory. So the level of glory is the level of investment, the level of meditation on the word. You want your life to be more glorious? Stay more in the word of God. Two things you must not joke with. Investment in prayer and investment in the word of God. If you are serious with your Christian life and you want to live a Christian life that counts, a life of victory. You have seen yourself struggling and you don't want to struggle again. There are some habits you are struggling with. There's a lifetime you don't want in your life, but you see yourself falling in that. There's a way out. And the only way out, stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. Psalm 119, 11. How can a young man cleanse his way? By giving heed to your word. Verse 11. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin. It's an antidote. So stay in it is the antidote to sin. Stay in it. It is what brings transformation. Can you make up your mind this afternoon? Or rather this morning. 
Make up your mind this morning that you are going to invest in the word of God and invest in prayer. This month is our month of word investment. But I've told us there are two investments you must make. You must take very serious if you want to live a life that counts. If you want your Christian life to be meaningful. If you want to enjoy victory. If you want to be a disciple indeed. Christianity can be a struggle. Yeah, Christianity can be a thing of joy. It can be a cruise. Just a cruise. But it all depends on what you do with the word and prayer. Let's pray. How is your prayer life? How is your study life? You want to live a life that counts. You want to enjoy more victory. You want to carry God's presence and enjoy God more. You have been struggling to walk in obedience. I don't want to struggle again. You want to be the obedience to the word and to the will of God to become your natural life. To become what you delight in doing every day. You don't want to struggle. You just want to see yourself obeying and obeying, simply obeying. The simple way out is to stay in the word. It's like building on the rock when you stay in the word. When you stay in the word, there's the word energy. Faith. So then faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith will come alive. Zeal will come alive. Passion will come alive. Hope will come alive. And then the power to do. The force that generates or activates obedience will be generated. The word of God will be quickened in your heart to obey. You'll be quickened to obey. Your soul will be quickened to obey. Your heart will be quickened to put into practice what you have learned. Can you say this prayer today? Make a commitment. Father, I make a fresh commitment today to live by your word. To invest in your word. I will invest my time, my heart, my energy, my soul, everything. I will invest in the word. I will invest my energy. And I will see the transformation that this will bring into my life. A new man will be born. A new disciple. A new life of victory. A new life of joy. A new life without struggle. Christianity made simple. Christian life become pleasurable. Become desirable. That Christianity made possible. God did not intend for us to struggle to live the Christian life. The struggle is man-made because we don't take these two things seriously. When the apostles took it seriously, struggle left their life and they began to cruise in the Christian life. We give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Shall we pray? Is that your decision today? Let the word of God dwell richly in you in all wisdom. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart. Does it look like struggle? No. And ye beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Does it look like struggle? No. The struggle is because we do not invest in prayer and the word of God. And that struggle ends today for somebody here in the name of Jesus. And I pray that that word that is called the perfect law of liberty, it will bring liberation today. Liberation from sin. Liberation from affliction. In the name of Jesus. Liberation from poverty. Liberation from struggle. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray for the next few minutes. I'd like us to pray in the name of Jesus. As you pray, you are generating that grace. That grace, that desire. That desire is coming alive forever. Oh God, your word is settled in heaven. Desire, fresh hunger for the word of God. Fresh hunger to stay. Fresh hunger to invest your time. To invest your life. To invest your mind. Your heart will be there in the name of Jesus. Without distraction. Focusing on the word. 
If you continue in my way, can you pray? I want to hear you pray. Let it begin now. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, pray as you pray. You're, 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 you're generating that energy. As you pray, your desire for the word of God is coming alive. Spend time for the next few minutes. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Is somebody here at all? I want to hear you pray. Lift your voice and 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 pray. Palebo Shante Lamandoske Paloske Intoske Parusa Anatia Baruskate Entoske Parandre En Kotopa Palatia Baruza Te En Koto Palandre In Kote Palimoske Pa In a te Paladosia Te I like you to pray. I want to hear you pray in the name of Jesus. Palandre En Kotopa Alabrani Agapre Le Koto Palikaba Manate Everybody I want to hear you pray in a day as you are praying, you are giving away your weaknesses, giving up your weaknesses. Ilabadoske palandre, enkoto palandre, enkoto branikaba, palate mate agaba, alabani ate, enkoto braneto pre, enkopo ziate, alaba palandre. You are extending your weaknesses for the strength of the Lord. Magaba, aneto pre, kabadoza, investment, investment into the ministry of prayer. Investing in the ministry of the word, and let to pray. I got to your weakness, extending your weakness for the strength of the Lord. And let to pray, and we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a glass the glory of God. We are changed, we are changed into the same glory, from glory into the same image, from glory to glory, beholding Him. And let to pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. I pray for everyone here. And everyone hearing the sound of my voice, even though following online, I pray for fresh hunger for the world. I pray for fresh determination to invest in prayer and the ministry of the word. And I pray that as you stay in the word, as you invest in the word, that word, you will be blessed. It will liberate you from all bondage. It will bring victory into your life. It will transform your life and transform your situation. It will bring healing to your body. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The Bible says, this man shall be blessed. May you be that man that will be blessed. Amen. That man that stays in the word, continuing in the word. And that word will bless every aspect of your life. It will bless your marriage. It will bless your career. It will bless your ministry. Amen. It will bless your finances. Amen. It will bless every aspect of your life. Amen. You will be blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the word of God bless your life. Amen. May it bring transformation. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen.